Hey guys, welcome back to another set. So in this one, we'll be going through the old spec, Paper 3H. Okay, so this is actually easier than the new spec for the Jan 2019. Okay, so as always, you know, you've seen this before. We're going to go through the whole paper and uh, see how we do. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight in, yeah? So, number one. Jerry drove 315 kilometers from London to Leeds. Okay, so that's the distance. His average speed was 75 kilometers per hour. So we're working in kilometers and time unit is hour. So before we carry on, always write the formula. So the formula for speed distance time is speed equals distance by time. Okay. Now work out how long it took Jerry to drive from London to lead. So how long refers to the time. Okay. So in this set, in this sequence, what you want to do is rearrange this to make time the subject. So we just have to swap T and S around. You're going to have now t equals distance by speed okay so it's easy multiply time divide speed now the distance we know is 315 kilometers by 75 kilometers per hour now when you smash this in the calculator you're going to get a time of 4.2 now because we're working in hours kilometers per hour this refers to 4.2 hours okay now be careful it says give your answers in hours and minutes Remember, this is four hours, but the point two does not mean two minutes or 20 minutes. So that's, you gotta be careful there. So in order to get minutes, we take the point two bit in the cut of uh, the 4.2 or 0 0.2 and multiply that by 60 because we know there's 60 minutes in an hour. And when you do that, you will literally get 12 minutes. So this means that um, the time it took Jerry to drive from London to Leeds was four hours and 12 minutes. So we just write here. So therefore, T equals 4 hours and 12 minutes. All right, number two. So point A has coordinates 4 and minus 1. Okay, so this would be written over. Point B has coordinates 9 and 7. Work out the coordinates of the midpoint of this line AB. So this means connecting the two points together, let's say A and B. And we're trying to find the midpoint, let's say M. So that's literally halfway between A and B. Now the nice trick is to find a number halfway is simply add up the, the coordinates and then half them. So looking at the X coordinates, we're going to have 4 plus 9, which is 13. And then you half it. And then halving 13 is 6.5. For the Y coordinates, you got minus 1 plus 7. So adding those two, you get 6. Half of 6 is 3. So our coordinates is going to be 6.5 and 3. Okay, number 3. <clears throat> so we got a universal set, so that's what that symbol means, of all whole numbers from 3 to 13. So in essence, yeah, if you had to copy this out properly, <laughs> if that's how it looks like, you can write all whole numbers from 3, 4, 5, all the way to 18. Okay, so that's pretty much everything we need to include. Now it tells us that A, B, and C are given by the following elements. So these numbers are known as elements in the set. Okay. Now list the members. Okay, members elements. List the members of the set A and B. So this means when A intersects with B. So what A and B have in common? Well, we can just see that they both have a three, a six, and a nine. So that so the sets the things they have in common is three, six, and nine. Now next bit. A uniting of C, so A union C. This means that we need to write every single element that appears in A and C without repeating. So we can see that in A, it's easy to start with the first one, we have a 3, a 6, a 9, an 18. And now looking at C, we also have a 6, we don't copy it. We have a 12, which is unique. And that's it. So usually for this one, I'm not sure if it matters to do an order, but when you do this, always rewrite it in order anyway, just in case. So you've got 3, 6, 9, 12, and 18. So you've got five elements. Okay, so Sasha writes down that 12 does not belong in A. So that's what that symbol represents. Is Sasha correct? Well, let's have a look. Let's look at set A. So A, we have 3, 6, 9, 18. 12 is not in there, which is true. So the answer is yes. Since, and we just say... A contains um, 3, 6, 9, and 18, but does not include um, 12. Okay, 
Easy, yeah? This is just basically your understanding of notation. So that's the point of this question. Number four. A circle has a diameter of 18 centimeters. Okay? Work out the circumference of the circle. Whew, is that it? Give your answer correct to one decimal place. All right, so all this is saying is that we need to know the circumference formula, which is, by the way, either 2 pi r, where r is the radius, or the circumference is um, pi times the diameter, d. Well, we might as well go over the second formula. Since the diameter is 18, it's just literally going to be pi times 18, so 18 pi. And I'm smashing down your calculator. So smashing this in your calculator, you're going to get 56.5 centimeters to 1 dp. Okay, number five. So Josh has 40 counters in a bag. In the bag, there are 18 reds, 13 blues, and 9 yellows. Okay, so we're going to keep this in mind, yeah? Josh puts some more red counters in the bag. Okay, so this is an important statement here. When you add more red bags, more red counters, and we don't know how many, let's say now he has 18 reds plus an additional X counters, yeah? So that means in the bag, he had 40 originally. Now he's got an additional X amount. The blue is still 13, and the yellows are still 9. So this is the total divided by this amount here, yeah? Now, Josh, Josh is now going to take at random a counter from the bag. The property that he will take a red counter is a half. So in other words, this means that if you're going to take a red, we know how many reds there are. There is 18 plus some extra x over 40 plus x, which is the total. And we know that this is equivalent to a half. Okay. Oh, well, this is a random one. Work out the property that he will take a yellow counter. So we can work out what yellow is later. Let's go ahead and figure out what the value of x is, yeah? And once we have x, we'll know exactly how many counters are actually in the bag. And then we can work out the yellows. So solving this equation here, the easiest way to work through it is to firstly clear the fraction. In other words, multiply 40 plus x across and 2 across. If you do that, you're going to have 2 times 18 plus x equals 1 times, well, 40 plus x. Now, all you want to do here, guys, is literally expand the bracket. So both sides doing that, you can get 36 plus 2x equals 40 plus x. Now, moving the x's to the same uh, to the left side and the non-x's to the right. So in other words, subtracting x, you're going to have 2x goes down to 1x. And subtracting 36 across, 40 goes down to 4. So x is 4. That means there were actually 4 more reds added on. So this means that the total of 40 should have been now 44. And the question was, work out the property that he will take a yellow. We know we've got 9 yellows, so it's going to be 9 out of 44. And that's the answer, guys. Number 6. Okay, factorize y squared plus y. Now this literally means we have to see what both of them have in common. Well, clearly they both have a y, so we can divide y from them. And if you divide y from them, y squared, taking a y out, you left, you're left with a single y. If you divide y by itself, it becomes 1, because y times 1 is y. And that's it, this is done. Now b, solve uh, 3 times m plus 7 equals 12 minus 5m. Easy. Firstly, we just have to expand the bracket, so you can get 3m plus 21 equals 12 minus 5m. And now all you want to do is move the m to the left side, so add 5m across, so you can get 8m. And subtracting 21 across, so 12 minus 21, you should get minus 9. Double checking that. Yep. And now lastly, you just want to divide by 8. So it'd be m equals minus 9 over 8. Now here, expand and simplify this double bracket. So this is just literally the FOIL method, guys, yeah? So you're going to do g times g and then g times 2. Then you can do minus 7 times g and minus 7 times 2. So doing it like that, so doing the top half first, g times g is g squared. g times 2 is uh, plus 2g. Minus 7 times g is minus 7g. Minus 7 times 2 is minus 14. And always don't forget this. Now we're going to collect the middle bits. 2g minus 7g is minus 5g. So you have g squared minus 5g minus 14. And yeah, that's it. <clears throat> now D, write down the inequality shown on this number line. Okay, so the way this looks, just say this is x, yeah? Let's assume it's x. 
now we just have to figure out the, the arrows here and the arrows here so when you have like a dot like a circle here which is by the way not shaded in we're going to say this is not equal to that point so this is going to be at minus four but if it's shaded in this means that the x value also equals the three so be greater or equal than three so summary if it's not shaded no equal sign if it's shaded it includes so equal sign there and yeah that's it guys um that's six done okay number seven so there are 96 cards on a table each card is either red or black so keep this in mind the ratio of the number of red cards to the black cards is five to seven so this means if you added these parts up we're gonna have a total of 12 parts meaning five out of 12 cards are red whereas seven out of 12 cards are black okay so this can be helpful to determine the number of cards here yeah? in your calculator what you're gonna do is write 5 over 12 times 96 to get the number of red cards and that will give you 40 cards whereas if you did 7 out of 12 times uh, 96 you're gonna get 56 so just double checking 40 plus 56 gives us 96 so all the cards are present now out of this red it says there is a circle on 35 percent of red cards so out of 40 you've got to find 35 percent of um, 40 will give you the circle reds so you can write on your calculator you can literally copy down 35 percent times 40 and it'll give us 14 so there are 14 red circles there is a circle on three fourteenths of black cards so again we do the same thing so three fourteenths of the black cards we know there are 56 black cards so in your calculator uh, 3 4 teams of 56 you can do it mentally but don't bother you get 12 black circles now on how many of the 96 cards is there a circle well adding up the circle cards 14 plus 12 you get 26 circle cards that's it if they ask for a fraction it will be 26 over 96 but in this case they, they just want how many and that's it guys.